Good afternoon, Hachi. Welcome on VH Berries. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm extremely grateful. A lot of great things are coming up uh, for you in this last couple months. An album mm -hmm. and a tour in North America. How are you doing today? I'm good. Um, it's a really nice day in Brisbane. It's really rainy. It rained all through the night and I think it's going to rain all day, which I really like. So it's nice and calm and peaceful here. Not too hot. The album is called giving the word away and I can truly feel after uh, having uh, multiple listenings to uh, it that mm -hmm. you really gave um, a lot of your own personality and also a lot of your energy away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. I put a, a lot of time and effort into this album, so I'm happy that you can hear that on the other side. That's right, because you're really taking the time between each project. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, the last uh, entire project, which is an EP, uh, was released in 2018. Yeah, the last one, we did an EP and an album. So I've had those two out, but it has been a really big break since the album. Um, and it really feels like starting again for me. So yeah, it definitely still kind of feels like the first album to me. And also, this is um, a project, I'm talking about giving the word away, um, that uh, has a complete sort of storyline and that is much longer than anything you have done before. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely, um, hopefully, my most thorough work. I think, yeah, I spent the longest on the lyrics and all of the different versions of the song. So, yeah, put a lot into it. It really, um, I really wanted to go a lot deeper on this album and talk about more personal things and cover a lot of topics that I hadn't really covered before because I felt like my first EP and my first album were really mostly about like love and heartbreak and like common things that you feel in your teens and early 20s, like, you know, friendships beginning and ending and Um, really basic concepts like that. So I really wanted to go deeper with a lot more, I don't know, just broad topics, especially coming out of that period of my life and into kind of a new phase um, over the last two years. I wanted to open up a new world, I guess. And opening a new world uh, also means uh, coming in the, in, the, in the industry as, as a sort of outsider uh, um, from like the US market because you are an Australian and you grew up in Brisbane. So you have a very different perspective on that. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I've lived here for um, my whole life. I've never lived anywhere else. So it's definitely weird going um or at least at first it was kind of touring around areas that I hadn't really spent a lot of time in because America and the UK for example are quite similar to Australia in a lot of ways in that you know they're obviously both mainly English speaking places and um yeah I don't know there are a lot of similarities but there's also like slight cultural differences in the way things work and the way people act so um it was definitely a bit of a shift and then you know going even further into like Europe and Asia it's completely different so it was definitely a learning curve spending so much time touring those other countries um but I do feel lucky coming from Australia because I think being so separate from everything else you have I guess your own experience. I don't really know how to put it into words, but um, I'm definitely ready to explore other parts of the world now. You're preparing your ship to explore uh, the entire earth. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully if everything goes to plan this year. I am very curious about uh, your early days and growing up uh, in uh, Brisbane, which is in the uh, part of Australia called um, the Queensland. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was born here uh, 28 years ago. I have three older siblings. So I'm the youngest in my family. And I think um, that experience meant that I really absorbed the music that all of my older siblings and my parents listened to. So I had a really wide range of music growing up from like 70s music, like, you know, Billy Joel and Carole King and the Beach Boys and... Um, The Beatles and Todd Rundgren and then 
a lot of 90s music from my older siblings who really loved things like um, the Spice Girls and the Coors and we listened to a lot of uh, Shania Twain and the Cardigans and um, Backstreet Boys and everything that was on the radio back then. So I think that definitely filtered down into my music taste and definitely taught me a lot about how to listen to music and listening out for things like harmonies and bridges and songs because those were kind of the golden eras of really well-written songs and pop songs in particular, I guess. So I think that definitely affected me, the, um, my upbringing here, and definitely um, made its way into my music. And Hachi, um, what is the... Uh changing moment in which you became uh, Hachi because you started from uh, Harriet Pilbim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my name. Um, uh, Hachi was like a childhood nickname of mine. So my parents would call me Hattie and then it kind of morphed into Hachi. <laughs> um, and no one really called me that except my parents when I was a kid. But um, my husband was helping me record my demos for Hatchie when I decided I wanted to do my own, own solo, solo project. And um, he named the demos Hatchie Demo just as a joke to make fun of me. Um, and it just stuck when we were trying to think of a, a different name for the project. It just made the most sense. And when I sent a few friends the demo and it was called, it was the demo for Try, but I didn't really have a name for it yet. And the, it just said Hatchie Demo. My friends were like, so you're going to call it Hatchie? Hatchie's cool. Like, you should definitely go with that. And it just stuck. And, um, yeah, I couldn't have thought of something better if I tried. So it was, it's good. It's, it's, it's very cutesy, which I definitely wasn't planning. I don't think it's a very cool name, but that's okay. Um, because it's, it's, <laughs> it's my name, technically. So it makes sense. This is very inspiring. <laughs> And in this same uh, Australia country, uh, you just mentioned it before, uh, there is your husband, Joe, yes. who is helping you actively and supporting you. Yes, yeah, he plays in the band live and he also um, writes with me and works on the production with me. He does a lot. He does pretty much the same amount as me, so it's kind of really a duo um, He does all of my visuals as well, all the photos and most of the videos up until Quicksand. He did all of my music videos. So <laughs> he does a lot of the graphic design as well. So we work every day together. He's maybe the one driving the limo in the Quicksand oh. video <laughs> clip. <laughs> no, that would have been a good idea, though. We should have gotten him a little hat and a uniform. I just mentioned this very special clip and music because this is my uh, personally favorite one. Oh, uh, so the clip is directed by uh, Nathan Castile. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about this very special collaboration between two universes? <laughs> yeah, Nathan's a friend of ours. So he played in the band Orkin when they supported us. Um, I think it was at our first LA show at the Bootleg Theatre in probably 2018, I think. Um, So we've been friends with him since then and he does a lot of videos for artists like Remy Wolf and he does a lot of set design and production as well. I think that's what he mostly does. So he was a really good fit because we wanted someone who could really work on a visual world for the song. So we all collaborated on that and um, yeah, him and Joe created some of the visuals together. Nathan built the set, the marquee that I'm sitting on, that's like a roof. Um, with the brick wall up the back. He built all of that himself. That's all a set that got put together that day and taken apart at the end of the day. Um, he wired all the neon lights himself and, um, yeah, put a lot of time and effort into it. So we were really happy with how that ended up and we just wanted something that was kind of a level up from any of the videos we'd done before because we'd done them all ourselves at home on really small budgets and we really wanted this one to look different because we felt like the song deserved a bigger video. So, um, yeah, it was great. Really great outcome. There is, of course, this very grainy uh, videography style. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering, where did you shoot the video? Because I cannot uh, see if it's like in California or in Brisbane. That one's in LA. It's in Los Angeles. So we went over in November to do work. We wanted to do a few videos. We ended up coming home after that video. Um, we're going back over soon for the touring and hopefully we'll stay a bit longer this time. But yeah, we did that in LA and he went and got all those neon light shots around LA. So I'm sure people who live there will recognize all those neon lights. Like the Circus Liquor one is a very famous one. And yeah. 
Absolutely, Hachi. I was going to mention it. Since then, you're responsible of all the tourism in the city <laughs> because you just, for example, had some um, uh, footage of the uh, circus that you mentioned and also uh, the Sahara Motel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm responsible for the tourism. I think <laughs> there's a lot of work that goes into that, but maybe I got one person over the line with the neon lights, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this very uh, interesting tour that is uh, coming in a couple months mm -hmm. uh, that you are doing um, with Kellerin uh, uh, Love Glow. Yes. Yeah. Super excited. Um, we haven't, we've hardly done any shows since 2000, early 2020. Um, that was kind of when we stopped touring even before everything happened with COVID lockdown. We were taking a little bit of a break. So we've only played, I would say... Um, maybe seven or eight shows in the last two years. So we're really excited to do a proper tour again, um, especially in the US. We definitely get a different feeling playing over there. I think it's it can be really challenging touring there because there are so many cities that you can play that you like drive between them all and um, there's a lot to cover. It can be really long and, and hard touring over there. But um, it's equally as exciting and rewarding Um, seeing everyone at the shows so I'm really keen to get back over there and kind of hit the ground running and hopefully just keep going after that and not stop again and Caroline Lovego we're, we're like huge fans of hers we love her music so she was a no-brainer for us to get her to support and I'm really excited to see her live because I don't think she's played many shows we've seen her play a little bit but um, yeah keen to see it up close and personal And for all of these uh, in-person shows, you need, of course, of course, costumes. And I believe that <laughs> in the room you are right now, there is a lot of clothes. Oh, there are some clothes. Yeah, there's clothes that I'm um, getting rid of to move. So I've been trying to sell these for a while. Um, but it's, it's a lot of effort <laughs> putting them all online. So I got to get into that this week and try and clean out my closet a little bit before we move. You want to sell them? That's crazy. In 2022, <laughs> it's possible to buy clothes from Hachi. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sold a lot last year. Um, no, I have way too many clothes. I used to have a really bad habit of just buying clothes without really thinking about it. And I'm definitely past that now, thankfully. But um, yeah, particularly in lockdown, I think it was really easy for everyone to just order a bunch of online packages to kind of make the time pass a bit quicker and, I don't know, have something to be looking forward to so um i don't have that habit anymore thankfully i i rarely buy clothes now but um yeah i've got a lot of clothes to get rid of because i can uh, feel that you have a lot of interest uh for clothing and especially uh fashion and the design because uh, this is part of your strong imagery on this uh, upcoming project uh for example uh yeah. the wings uh behind you mm. the white wings on some of the videos i've got the wing yeah i've got the wings here too i can't i can try and pull them down no they're tied up but i've got the wings next to me on the on the windowsill um yeah the wings were joe's idea for that video we um had been thinking a lot about what i was wearing and wanted to make it a bit more interesting and so joe had the idea for the wings a week or two before we were shooting and he ordered them online quickly and I wasn't too sure if I wanted them because they seemed a bit random but um no I'm really glad we went with them in the end as soon as I put them on I was like I realized it made sense it just is I don't know it creates a bit more of a story I guess it looks a bit more like I'm maybe I'm leaving a party or I don't know it makes you kind of question it a little more and um yeah they're cool I don't know what I don't want to get rid of them so I don't know what to do with them but they're kind of falling apart because they're just cardboard and feathers so We'll see, maybe I'll auction them off. Of course. And <laughs> giving the word away mm -hmm. uh, is a journey in itself. Because yeah. um, I went through a lot of emotions. I went from dancing uh, to more uh, melancholia. Mm -hmm. This is a very uh, rich spectrum. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you say that. I really wanted to to cover a lot of ground and really expand my sound. Um, not just lyrically, like I mentioned earlier, but also, yeah, sonically as well. I wanted to experiment a bit and, you know, it's still overall really a pop album. 
I don't think anyone else would call it experimental. It's not experimental music, but for me, I was experimenting with different sounds and yeah, I just didn't want to get stuck too much in one corner. Um, which I think I kind of started to do just with myself. I was really like sticking to this kind of like dream pop sound and playing around with shoegaze and playing around with pop, but not really leaving that corner. And I really wanted to, um, to expand upon that with this album and open up doors for myself so that I can continue to grow as an artist and not feel like I have to keep making the same sound again or people will be disappointed. So yeah, it's, 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 there's happy moments and there's sad moments and there's everything in between. <laughs> so I'm sorry for that emotional roller coaster. I think that this is definitely uh, the best part of the album. The roller coaster is what we are all looking for. Oh, thanks. And- <laughs> And uh, concerning the process of writing and recording this uh, very uh, special uh, album, Mm -hmm. I assume that you did that during uh, uh, 2020 uh, or maybe even before. Maybe that you are so productive that uh, after releasing the 2018 one, you just jumped into the new project. No, I wanted to, but I took a bit of a break because we toured like constantly throughout 2018 and 2019 and... Um, yeah, I took a little bit of time off writing a lot. I was still doing a little bit, but, um, I mostly didn't get into this album until 2019. Um, in the second half of the year in between touring, I started writing. That was when I started writing quicksand. I think maybe I started writing the key around then as well. I can't remember a few of the demos started around then. And then, um, yeah, I mostly recorded them. Well, we re- I wrote and recorded everything else in 2020. We finished mixing it in December 2020. There were a few mix changes after that, but it was mostly done. So, um, yeah, it's it's been finished for about a year now. So it feels like there's been a really big break and I'm just ready to keep going. I really like this way of creating art, actually, because... Uh, you have your creative bubble in Australia and times to time you are uh, jumping in a plane to uh, Los Angeles and North America to Mm -hmm. uh, meet and uh, perform. Yeah, it's definitely good to push yourself in that way, I think, and to experiment with your creative limitations, I guess. I used to just write by myself or with Joe and that was good because it really helped me build my confidence. But I think once I started um, creating music with other people, it really pushed me to try new things and to figure out what I don't want to do as well. I think that's important as well, figuring out what feels right and what doesn't feel right. Um, anything that you do in like a writing session or you know a recording session with someone else, you always take at least one lesson from it, whether it's something really small or something really life-changing so those experiences are always important even if at the time they feel really difficult this word ambitions um Mm. is very meaningful uh because i'm thinking about this word because in this very uh new album Mm -hmm. there are no featurings you are alone and you are uh doing it uh the right way Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. There's no, yeah, there's no features on the album, but it was definitely a more collaborative album than my previous ones. I wrote more with Joe this time and, um, George had a really big hand in the production. Whereas with Keepsake and the Sugar and Spice EP, they ended up sounding a lot, quite similar to the demos in a good way. Like that's what I wanted. And I really wasn't looking to change them much. Um, but this album has a, a lot of in-depth production and there was a lot more thought and time put into it I think so in that way it definitely features Joe and George heavily but um yeah no it's very much just hatchy with no no other artists featuring on it and with all of this uh pop related instrument and uh, drums and all of uh the instrument what uh instruments uh do you play and are you uh did you learn back in uh, your journey? Yeah. Um, I've sang since I can remember. I've been singing since I was probably four or five. But, um, I mean, I tried a few different instruments in school, like clarinet and um, piano and guitar. And guitar was the only one that I really enjoyed and that I really wanted to practice, I guess. So 
that one I kept kept playing up until you know adulthood and then when I was about 17 I had a friend who was looking for someone to play bass in their band and they knew that I could sing and that I could play guitar so they asked me to jump on bass and from then on I've always played bass I still play guitar to write music but I'm not good at it so I don't play it live I tried to play it live for a little bit but it was a bad idea. I, I can't believe I did that now. Looking back, if there are any old videos of me playing guitar live, they're so bad. Um, but bass, I find a lot easier to sing and play bass than I do with guitar because guitar, you get like distracted with pedals and it's so much to think about. Whereas even though other people seem to find bass and singing harder, I find it easier. I don't know why. I think because there's no pedals involved or not many pedals. I only use two pedals. So yeah, I love playing bass, but I recently live just started singing so I can focus more on the singing and more on the kind of communicating with the audience because I felt like I was a bit stuck behind the bass and behind the microphone before when I couldn't move around. So I'm experimenting with singing and not playing bass live at the moment, but um, I think I'll probably, I might still go back to playing bass and singing depending on, yeah, what the plans are for the next tours and what the next, you know, releases sound like. So yeah, it's mainly bass and voice for me. That's official, Achi. Now we know that in addition of driving the limo, uh, <laughs> Joe is going to be the one uh, carrying all the instruments like a genius. Oh, he already does that. He, yeah, he, you, I mean, he physically carries them and he also, um, yeah, plays, he plays synth much better than me and he plays guitar as well and he's a lot better with production. So we definitely fill in each other's gaps when it comes to our abilities. What would be your dream futurings if you are deciding uh, one day on the next project to include one futuring, which can be crazy? Oh my God, I don't know. I feel like I get asked this question a lot and I can never think of what my answer is in the moment. I mean, I think working with like... Um, Nine Inch Nails, like Trent or Atticus, um, either of them would be an amazing collaboration because they've, you know, been making music for so long and would have a completely different outlook on it, I think, from modern producers, new producers, I guess, and um, obviously they make amazing music. And, I mean, they've worked with Halsey now, so who knows, maybe they're much more open to a pop collaboration than I ever would have thought. Um, so, yeah, that's probably a big one. Maybe we can see, for example, some crossover uh, uh, with pop and hip hop, maybe. Or oh, maybe, maybe um, I saw that you did a cover of a Tyler Swift song called August. Yes, I did. This that for could my be Patreon. a great choice. It could be, yeah. That one definitely um, was a, a favorite on the Patreon. I wasn't expecting to release that one publicly, uh, but it's on my YouTube now. Um, because I put it on TikTok to kind of let people know it was on my Patreon and a lot of people went crazy and demanded that I put it online um, because they didn't want to subscribe to Patreon, which I get. Um, so yeah, you never know. We'll see. Never say never. And Hachi, what I found very uh, fascinating uh, is, for example, your last um, video clip mm -hmm. that was released a couple of days ago called... Um, giving the word away. This is the self-titled uh, single of the album. Mm -hmm. And I can just say one word. This is experimental. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would say that qualifies as experimental. Definitely those visuals. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't have much time to put it together a video for that one. So we just wanted to do something really simple and um, kind of focus on the lyrics and, and the sounds rather than trying to create a visual that might detract from the song. So um, we just <laughs> filmed me in front of a green screen in my parents' basement and Joe has a lot of analog <laughs> video synthesizers that he uses and he, he does videos for other people and artwork for other people as well. So he's done a lot of that on um, other artists' work and, yeah, we thought it made sense to kind of experiment with that for this song and just create more of like a visualizer rather than a, a video. You just mentioned the basement of yeah. uh, your uh, parents, mm -hmm. which is uh, the best place in Australia, I guess. Uh, you could say. I mean, I wrote, I mean, it, it, yeah, I wrote some of the, I think I wrote Try in the same room and sugar and spice and um sure i wrote when i lived downstairs with my parents so it's a pretty pretty magical uh 
grounds for musical discovery, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm luck lucky that I can um, that I can use that because it's it's kind of more um, soundproof because it's all carpet, whereas my house is it's all wood and it's kind of falling apart, so it's not very soundproof. Hachi, Ariad Pilbim, uh, I am wishing you the best and very hopefully uh, I saw that you are touring in Montreal and this is one of the uh, few places of your tour in which I have the required age to enter the room. So thank you so much for <laughs> thinking of me. <laughs> oh, that's so good. How old are you? I am 19 oh and I saw God. that like on some of the uh, room like Sleeping Village, I don't want to name too much of them, like no most of the Mississippi studio, mm -hmm. uh, you put some barrier at the entry. You don't want me to enter the, <laughs> the place. I'm sorry. I can't, I, it's not my decision. I, I wish I could let, I could play more all ages shows over there. Um, I think it's definitely something I want to try and do next time, I guess, or hopefully play some festivals that allow people of all ages in. Um, it's hard. That kind of thing isn't really in my control, but, um, I'm glad you can make it. I can't believe that, that you're so young. You're so well established online. Hachi, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate your time as well.